<laughs> For a good long while, I've wanted to make a uh, cemetery uh, graveyard. Um, just need an excuse uh, to make one Halloween month, so I thought I might as well do one. Um, gonna use it in this, I think, phenomenally, because there's an adventure I want to run that you go to a graveyard in Bree. Um, you don't need to set it up, so it's going to be pretty much done for fear to in mind, so I'm just going to do it as a you know, nice visual thing to put down on the table. And also, I will use it in other games as well. So, uh, we're going to make a uh, graveyard. <laughs> To uh, make the uh, sort of earth graves as depicted in the uh, adventure, I'm um, just going to use off cut foam. So, whatever projects you got, just use that. And first of all, we're just going to shape it into a sort of a, a mound. Like so, I can use any foam for this. I'm going to shape it and then just keep going until you've got it. Mound like, I guess. Just be careful, your fingers. You don't want to burn yourself. Uh, it's just depicted as mounds of grass dug over, so it's not even body. So I'm probably going to add a little gravestone into it anyway. Something like that, really. Next up, I want to get some uh, chipboard um, backing here. And this is just some off-cut that I've used in a previous project. Uh, get your grave mound. Just draw around it. And I'm going to cut this out. Now you don't have to do this. Uh, the reason I'm doing it is just to protect the underside of the foam. Top side will be protected when it gets flocked. It'll be glued and flocked, so that will add a bit of protection. Whereas the underside is just foam, so it's just for when you store them and you take them out and you. So you don't have to do this. I just think it's best to uh, protect it. Now we do get some glue. And glue it on underneath. Now, also, what we're going to do is put a little grave marker on it. Now, you don't want anything too modern like what we have, but I'm assuming you know, graves aren't really graveyards aren't described in Tolkien's work, and this comes from Adventures in Middle Earth, and they say it's like grass mounds. So, I imagine the people of Bree would put some sort of marker on. So, for that, just going to get a bit of foam, uh, roughly measure out how wide I want it, Not too big, and you can either make it as big as, as you like, uh, put it in here, you can add a bit of, like, be inspired by a bit by a modern graveyard by doing something. The only thing I would say is no crucifixes, crosses type thing, type symbology. Stay away from that even though it's tempting to do that for a graveyard. Uh, again, you just want to use a model just for reference because great people forget how big gravestones actually are. Of course you can, there's mine like that. I've already got one here where it's just a simple Piece of uh, it's going to be stone, make them as big or as small as you like, but then when you're done, just come in and put it here and push down on the top here. And this will just hopefully you can see it just indent it slightly. Then come down for a knife, score in, and try and cut out that indent. So you create a little, little groove and hopefully that will sit in like so and you just glue it in. Now 
like so. This is it pretty much built. Uh, one thing I forgot to do, which we can do now, and which would have been easier before we glued the gravestones in, is to try and peel off the uh, paper at the front. Like so, it's not too much of an issue. Of course you can do that. Now we can grab a ballpoint pen and just add some indents in for little writing and things. This would have been easier before you could uh, glue the graves in. Like I say, see that that will just show up when we paint it. So, which I'm going to do next: uh, paint this brown and this grey. So I'll come back once they're painted. No point in me showing you how to paint something. So what about an open grave? Uh, the adventure that this is inspired by in the Adventures of Middle Earth uh, pretty region guide mentions there's an open grave. That's going to be fine. We just get a bit of the uh, mounting card and sort of mark out sort of a rough base shape and cut that out. Next up, we're going to make some midi part. This is a um, two part sort of epoxy stuff, uh, similar I guess to in green stuff, to green stuff that you're probably more used to. I use this because it's cheaper to buy and for stuff like this, terrain projects where you don't need the detail, it's better for that point of view and you just make it up in the same way as you do green stuff. Uh, wash hands afterwards, it is resin. Uh, I find this stronger than green stuff as well, so great for terrain projects. It just doesn't have, even though this is called super fine, super fine, it's not that fine for for doing miniature sculpting anyway. Perhaps a better sculptor, as in anyone in the world, will say differently, but I just don't like it for that. It's great for terrain bits like this, so, so we're going to do mix it up, same way. Uh, and when it's mixed up, it's quite difficult to see because it starts off white, unlike beauty of green stuff where it's yellow and blue and you mix it to it, it becomes green, hence the name. Anyway, I think I'll do. Uh, it's going to roll it into a sausage type situation. And we're just going to go round the outside of this, sort of making an earthwork type. I almost said earthworm gym then, an earthworm, an earthworm gym, but yeah, making an sort of earthworks here. So I want it folding in, gently sort of sloping up, I don't know if you can see that. I kind of want to... Inside's going to be painted black, but hopefully you can get the general idea. We sort of slope it up like so. Are you impressed, Cap? He looks impressed. Okay, what I'm trying to do with a cat in the wing is just with a sculpting tool, just rough up the edges, just so it looks. It's going to, as I say, it's going to be flocked, painted, and stuff. But I just want to. Just wanna make it look like Earth more, like it's Earthworm Jim, or something like that. Just roughing it up, just ever slightly, not too much. And there it is. See, that will be the open grave. While the midi part's still wet, you can get your grave for it and sort of position it. Now, kind of want it to be. Sort of somewhat on key, so I'm gonna flatten it out a bit just so it's got a bit of working room. And I don't know if someone dug it out, how would it fall? Would it fall on its back? Not that, or would it fall in? I'm gonna go inward, so I come in, push it in, 
Uh, it doesn't have to remain in here in a moment, but something like that, do you reckon? So it looks like it's been dug and it's sort of collapsing inwards. I reckon it looks better like coming. I think it looks better going backwards. Something like like that. It's totally falling. Yeah, that looks good. There we go. Let that dry. So here's the ground, pretty much dry. Uh, what I want to do now is just a little bit of uh, glue around the brush just to work it in where I want it. And, yeah, and then just uh, dip it in. <laughs> Bit of sand on there, I'll get rid of that later on. That's generally it. Leave that to dry somewhere. We've uh, got them painted just in basic brown with grey on, and now we're going to just dry brush them in a uh, creamy colour. This is a tester pot and it's called Coastline. I guess in GW paint terms, this is like a uh, sarpy bone sort of colour. I'm just going to dry brush the entire piece uh, including the brown so whilst this will be uh, flocked if any uh, I want a bit of grass showing I don't want it to be like totally uh, one flat brown it's coming through the grey stone as well give that a bit of a oh, bit too much alright just do that And end up with greystone looking like that rather than a flat grey and so I've got all these to do all right next up now they're all painted might add a bit of green moss on the gravestone once I'm finished we're going to get some uh, PVA glue just going to water it down just slide to make it easier to move on and we're just going to paint the glue on as it were all over the uh, the mud. Uh, don't have to be too. Don't worry about getting every single bit covered, except for where grave comes out of the uh, the mud. And what I'm going to do is get some green flock here. This is like a. It started off as a wooden scenic green blendy flock and then over time that's where I just tap many different flocks into so it's quite a good mixture of little light bits and dark bits you end up with something like that and when that dries some of the dirt will shine through more but yeah well happy with that so uh, be quite similar to I'll show you this now we'll do this now which is the open grave but this I really do only want to go around the bottom edge leaving as much as that dirt exposed as possible after all it's been dug open they come in to the very bottom and likewise come in I don't want too much grass going in the bottom as well at the moment make it easier so what I want to do that one is paint that a bit black that is what that looks like so it looks like a nice open grave right I have more to do so I'll carry on Pretty much almost done. We're just going to add a bit of uh, weathering and moss to them. I'm going to use camo green. Uh, you can use a chart to look up what it's called now. Let's get a bit on a dry brush and I'm just going to dry brush it on. Uh, it probably probably won't pick up on a camera. It's going to be so subtle. You can see that. Just gives it a bit of moss effect on it. It's 
just weathers it. I don't know if you've ever been to an old cemetery. And that is pretty much our graveyard pieces done. You lay these down. Cat likes them. Oh, nice and weathered. Look, nice and rustic, nice and old for a little uh Whilst I'm using these for in Breland, you can use these in anything. It's just a medieval uh, graveyard, really. Just a very basic mound piled up over a body with a slab of stone as a headstone marker. Yeah, um, so hopefully you'll see these in an up-and-coming video. But that's it for now, guys. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.